Good day class. Today uh, we will be having um, a lecture uh, on the topic the impact of COVID-19 on mental health. As you are aware um, that COVID-19 has really had a huge impact on our lives on, on, on various levels uh, but today I want us to uh, focus on uh, how it has impacted our lives um, on your on mental health specifically um, so before we go ahead I just need to let you know um, what our learning objectives are so the first learning objective is um, to understand the meaning of mental health the second is to know the importance of mental health and its role in our overall well-being, an individual's overall well-being. And the third is the implications of physical isolation due to COVID-19. How has it affected us? And the fourth is what to do and how to stay mentally healthy through this pandemic. And last but not the least is the need for social interaction. So before we, um, we go into each of these, um, I just want to um, ask a question and a question I want you all to reflect on. And at the end of the, the lecture, I would like us to you know, delve into it and then discuss it. Um, so if I were to ask you, what were your thoughts? What were your feelings? Um, when uh, we heard about uh, the lockdown, how did you feel? Did you feel like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Did you feel like the world is going to come to an end? Like, how was your feeling like? And the other question is, how prepared did you feel? Did you feel like you're really prepared to handle it? Because I can tell you, as we go into the lectures, you will come to realize that um, these questions are so relevant um, so that um, we will be able to really give, you know, a face to it. All right. So are we all ready? Let's move on. Okay. So uh, before um, we get into um, the video I have, I want us to go and straight into uh, the first objective, uh, which is to understand the meaning of mental health. So mental health, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, talks about the state of an individual's emotional and psychological being. Emotional, how you feel, how you, you know, how you respond to things, and psychological, your reasoning and your ability to put yourself together and um, make good choices. And, and so when these two parts of or do add these two aspects of your being um, is in a good state, then you see that you are emotionally stable. You are psychologically stable. And then you can say that I am mentally stable. And if like, an individual is not, then that person is not stable. And that, of course, can lead to you know, a variety of, of, of issues, health issues, um, physical health, um, and, and a whole lot more. So, so that is the meaning, the, uh, you know, the meaning of additional meaning of mental health. And so let's, let's now move on. And I want us to look into knowing or understanding the importance of mental health. Um, during this COVID-19. So when COVID-19 hit and government started closing down, you know, schools and malls and um, offices and public spaces, it was not um, an easy thing for a lot of people. And I can tell you that um, I was really affected because, of course, I have my little kids and my husband couldn't go out to work. He had to work from home. It affected me because I couldn't work and, and so I had to be home, right? And it was not easy. So I want us to cast our minds back to March um, of 2020, 2020. How was it like for you? And let's look at it. How important was that? It was so important uh, to a lot of people that people struggled with 
having to stay indoors. People struggle with coming to terms with the fact that life is not as normal as they used to know it. And they just couldn't, you know, come to terms with it. A lot of people couldn't come to terms with that reality. And so a lot of people, some people were violating, you know, the, the order of staying home or not gathering just because we are naturally meant to be social beings. And so to say that people should be physically distanced or socially distanced, uh, it, it was a tough thing for people to really come to terms with. And so that's how important it is, you know. And then the other thing is, look at, look at the, the, the physical, the implication. There are people that, you know, ended up taking their lives because they could not cope with the situation. There are people that... Um, um, you know, we heard about lots of calls that were made, 911 calls. You know, people were having mental breakdown. Families were coming, you know, you know, heads were being hit together because people just couldn't stay under the same roof with each other for such a long time. So I want you to just, let's pause for a moment and look at this. What would we have done or what did you do? Or what are we supposed to do? Some people have been able to weather the storm. Others are still struggling. And so what can we do to ensure that we are, you know, mentally stable to do the, you know, the best we can with the situation that we have to make sure that we are okay, that we are not um, losing our minds, that we are not feeling like we are caged in, that we are not feeling like we are trapped in, you know? And so I want I want to hear from you. Um, Michelle, can you please share with us um, how was it like for you and your family when the government called for a lockdown in March 2020? Yeah, I see your hands up, Michelle. Can you please go ahead? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You you are not far from, you know, like it, it's just the same experience that I had. And I'm sure that if every one of us here were to share our experiences, it would be very similar. You know? And so coming to realize that life is just gonna be so different you cannot go out to school you cannot you know go out to shop as normal when you go to the shops you will have to stand and wait outside because the shop can only take a certain number of students uh, of sorry not students but a, a certain number of shoppers and um, you go to the doctor's office you know, some actually some doctors actually had this on um, notice on in front of their doors. Uh, we so we're sorry, we are closed. Um, if you know you're sick, but I mean, a sick person needs a doctor, right? But coming to the fact that your doctor says sorry, we cannot admit, we cannot attend to you. You're better off going to the hospital. And sometimes you go to the hospital and you have to wait for hours and hours to be attended to. Right, and students couldn't go to school. They were home morning till night, indoors with their families. And can you imagine staying home with your siblings all day and having to you know do the same old, same old activities? So, uh, I just want someone to share with us what were the things you did in your family uh, to help you guys uh, going to keep you guys going so that. You don't play the same old games, you know, and get bored with them or um, get into activities that you've been doing for forever, you know. So it can be boring. So could someone, you know, just uh, share with us, what did your family do uh, when the lockdown happened? I mean, we're still partially in a lockdown in a sense, but, um, you know, not as bad as or as serious as it was in March of last year. So could someone please share with us? Okay, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, Joel, can you please go ahead? I see your hands up. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Joel. Um, I can tell you for a fact that my children became very creative, just like Joel is saying. We became creative. We had to look for other ways of, you know, using the same things we had. We had to look for other ways of playing the same games. And just because we didn't want to, you know, feel like we're doing the same thing again. Because there is something about the brain that, you know, if you don't find a way to you know, infuse some kind of excitement to it, or if you don't find a way to introduce something nice and fun to it, you know, it starts feeling dull and, you know, and, and so it affects your entire being. It affects the way you think. It affects the way you see life. It affects the way you see yourself. And even the people around you, you become easily irritable. And so we had to learn to be creative. Myself and my family, we would go out, go to a field, and just throw balls at each other. You know, we just play catch. And so just like Joel is saying, they had to come up with ways of entertaining my, themselves indoors. And so that was one. So let's move on. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is, like, because we are, we're tying this together now, we'll be talking about the things that, you know, you, we, we, we can do to make sure that our mental self, we are intact, you know? So give me examples of things that, you know, one can do to, um, you know, put some kind of life and joy and, and excitement because staying indoors is boring. Like you all know it. You just, you know, confirmed that. So could someone else um, share with us or can you think of something that you know that would help you to stay afloat? Because it can be depressing, right? Yeah. Anna, I see your hands up. Okay, you wanna share with us? Go ahead. Go ahead, Anna. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. So Anna just shared with us here that they had to have a routine in their family on how, you know, to go out. They have certain days to go out, spend some time together, get some fresh air, you know, have a different scenery. And that helped them to, you know, keep going. So staying indoors, uh, we're not feeling blue and, you know, getting depressed and all that, which is awesome. That's great. All right. So I will be adding to that. Uh, one of the things that you you can also do to help yourself and your family, your loved ones, your friends, uh, you know, to stay uh, mentally healthy is to be grateful, gratitude. Now, why am I saying that? The reason I say that is because gratitude is a medicine of its own. When we think about the families that loved uh, that lost their loved ones, when you think about you know, um, the, 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 the stretch of the healthcare system because of that many people that are sick. But you are not. You are healthy. And so be grateful for the life you have. Be grateful for the health you have. Because it can only take a healthy and a, a, a living person to worry about all these other things of life, right? And so gratitude is one. Be grateful for your family. Be grateful that you're alive. Be grateful that you're surrounded by loved ones. That's important. Another point is this. That you don't allow what is happening out there to become a defining factor. Whether or not you should be happy or not. Let me put it this way. If someone calls me and tells me, oh, um, my mom is sick. 
I will empathize with them because I know what it feels like to have a mother being sick and that she's been um she has done the COVID test and you're waiting for the result. I, I get it. However, I would not allow that news to depress me because if I am going to be worried about everything I hear, and that will get to that point. If I begin to worry about everything I hear and I don't filter what I keep and what I don't, by the time I knew it, the things I hear become controlling. They begin to control my life. They begin to control my thoughts. And by the time I realize it, my health is affected, especially my mental health. Because your brain processes every information you hear. It might be short, it might be a long one, but it processes the information. So you got to be very careful with what you hear. And that's the next point I want to get to, is not giving too much to listening to news. We need the news, we need to know what's going on around us in our world, but trust me, the news, especially at this time, is so full of negativities that you have to have a time in the day when you say, okay, I'm going to watch the news for maybe 5, 10, 10, 15 minutes or 20, whatever it is, but don't stretch it. And as you listen to it, you know, find a way to sift through the news and pick, get the facts, know what's going on, what you need to do, but don't feed yourself so much with it so that it doesn't overwhelm you. It's important. Your mind has to be, you know, intact. Your family needs you. You need yourself. Your family needs you. You know, community needs you. And you have to be intact. So, um, to wrap up, I just want to um, ask if there's anyone that has, has any question or any more contribution to add to this. Uh, if you have anything you want to contribute to it before uh, we wrap up. Does anyone have anything? Did we cover everything? Okay. All right. So class, I just want to thank you so much for your audience. Um, with the points that I have just shared with us. So just, just to recap very quickly. You have to find a way to go outdoors. Not to, pop, you know, uh, large gatherings. Of course, they are not allowed. But you and your family or wherever you're with or even you yourself, you have to find time to go out, breathe in some fresh air, you know, have a, a different scenery. Maybe you can go to, you know, a lake or, you know, a wood or somewhere just, you know, just to connect with nature and just enjoy the beauty of the scenery. It gives you time to break away from, you know, the, the home environment. And the other thing, find be creative use the same things you have in the house but look for how you can repurpose them be creative about your 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 your, your you know personal recreation like i said with the case of my children they had to look for other ways of using the same toys and, and games play other things you know it helps a lot and be mindful of what you take in the information you take in does affect your entire being and finally i want to state this that don't be afraid or ashamed or embarrassed to say, I am not okay. I feel like I'm overwhelmed. I need to talk to somebody. Get, you pick up your phone, you know, give somebody a call. Make sure that you are in connection with loved ones on the phone. You can do video calls to be able to see people that you, you miss seeing. You know, you guys can have a watch party. You know, people do that now on, on Facebook, on YouTube. You can do all manner of activities together. Yes, they are not physically there, but it has a way of uplifting your spirit and your mental health will be intact. Okay, so I'll see you next time in our next lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have some information to um, share with your family that will be beneficial to you in terms of your mental health. Take care and have a nice day.